Welcome to the Restaurant Profile series. This is going to be a four-part series with the first video covering from vendor name all the way down to delivery handled by, the second video covering from delivery percentage all the way down to marketing fee, and then explaining in detail the financials of an order. The third video will cover everything in the second column from hours all the way down to the delivery area grid, and the fourth and final video will cover everything in the third column from upload restaurant logo all the way down to the bottom. The first little chunk we're going to be going over is what controls the restaurant's names, and that is vendor name, abbreviated vendor name, and eye context. So vendor name controls what the restaurant's name looks like in the edit menus and vendors section. Abbreviated vendor name shows what it looks like for the driver app, the dispatcher, and in a select few reports in the back end. And eye context controls what it'll look like for the customer facing website and the customer facing app. But if you leave eye context blank, then it'll just default to the vendor name for the customer facing app and the website. Tax rate is fairly self-explanatory. You can remit the tax to the restaurant, so pay it through if you would like to, if you're not collecting it. The delivery area tax rate, if you're taking food one town over and they've got a local option sales tax that you're required to pay, you can check that. Service fees, these are fees that the customer will pay, so it's gonna increase the cost to the customer, and it goes to the RDS, not to the restaurant, not to the driver. You can do it in dollars or percentage of the food, whatever works better with your pricing schedule. And phone number, fax number, and place by phone fax, all of these are actually interconnected. So the phone number will be used by the voice confirmation system and by the driver app. So the drivers will be able to call and check on the food and the voice confirmation system, if you have it checked, will call two minutes after the order has been placed, notifying the restaurant that they have an order. For place by phone or fax, if you are not faxing the order to the restaurant, you will have phone selected. And then right below that, you've got the address, city, state, zip code, and latitude and longitude. So you're going to go ahead and input the address information except for latitude and longitude. And after you have done that, you're going to go ahead and click fill. After you've clicked fill, if it worked, it should say successfully found and filled lat long for restaurant address. If it doesn't, first, Check that you've entered the address for the restaurant correctly. And secondly, that your Google Maps API is working correctly. You can do that by going into your site configuration and verifying that your API key is correct. If both of those are working, shoot us an email over at support at datadreamers.com so that I can look into the issue. Because if you plan on using the AI dispatcher at all, this needs to be working for the AI to know where to send the drivers and for it to base its estimates. And then continuing on, we have contact, whatever the restaurant gave you for contact information, be it a name, phone number, or email address, you can put in here. The email field below is primarily for email addresses where they would like to receive all of their orders. If you put in a personal email address here and select email orders, they are going to get an email for every single order that comes through. So just double check that they are wanting to get that many emails to a personal email address before putting that in there. If the restaurant has any special instructions that they would like the drivers to follow, you can go ahead and input that into the driver directions. And just below that, you see date first available. So put the day that the restaurant was first available. This is for a sorting option on the customer facing app and website where customers can sort by the restaurants that you have just recently acquired. And it even can display a small banner saying new as of the date that the restaurant was first available on your platform. 
If you have input item numbers on the restaurant's menu, you can choose whether or not they are displayed for the customer to see using the show item numbers on online ordering menus. And if the restaurant has time sensitive menus, like they've got a breakfast menu or a weekend brunch menu that are not always available, you can actually have those hidden during the times they are not available by using the hide headers option there as well. Just below those two, you see the items on menu supplied by RDS checkbox. If you are not supplying drinks, or if this is not a menu that you specifically supply all items for, then you will never have to check this. And just below that, you've got the three restaurant states, live, unlisted, and internal only. Live means that the restaurant is searchable and online, so the customers will find it on the website and on the mobile app. Unlisted means that customers can access it via a direct link, but it will not show up on the mobile app and it will not show up when searching on the website. And internal only means that it can only be accessed by staff via the intranet. Minimum order is fairly self-explanatory. In order to submit an order to the restaurant, the food total must exceed whatever is entered in the minimum order. If you do not want to have one, simply leave it at $0. For delivery handled by, you've got the two options, RDS and vendor. If you are planning on having your drivers go to the restaurant, pick up the food and deliver it, leave it as RDS. But if this is a pizza chain or a pizza joint that already does their own delivery and they're simply using you for order generation, they're considered a pass-through restaurant, you're just passing through the orders to them, go ahead and select vendor and they'll simply just move the orders right on through. You won't see them in the dispatcher and all you'll have to do is finalize the orders the same way you would a takeout order using the finalize pass-through and takeout orders button. So that is actually going to conclude everything for this video. In the next video, I'm going to be going over these sections. This is where you'll actually start taking money from the restaurants. So I wanted it to be its own separate video where I can go as in-depth as possible without making the video erroneously long. If you have any questions at all, please shoot us an email over at support at datadreamers.com. I'd be more than happy to get back to you and help in whatever way I can. Or if you would like to just learn more about the restaurant profile system, continue watching this video series or download the documentation PDF in the description below and read up on it. <laughs>